that phobia is based in anti-blackness. That is just a historical truth. If you want to learn more about this, you can read Fearing the Black Body, The Racial Origins of Fat Phobia by Sabrina Strings. Historians widely agree that the phenomenon of coveting thinness and despising fatness gained widespread popularity in the United States. If you look at the work of the High Renaissance in the 16th century, you will see artists and philosophers both refer to plumpness in women as a positive attribute. I think it's like really, really interesting how these people have to go so far back to justify their claims that obesity was good at one point in time. And like, okay, like you understand also that like slavery was okay at that time. Like, do you understand that? Like there was a bunch of things at that time that was like totally okay. And like people had this really, really weird idea of how things work. Like people were literally dying of like diarrhea, you know, like you would wake up and you would go tell your mom, like, mom, it's over. Like I woke up this morning and it was literally liquid. I'm probably going to die in three days. Um, I give to you all my worldly possessions, my three horseshoes, my cup that has been passed down between our family members, and my, my, my shirt that has been passed down also from my great-great-great-grandfather. So, like, I don't understand why these people will sit there to the ends of the days and try to sit and try to tell you that it's okay here. But like nowadays, it's so weird. We can't have these like, like back then in the 1500s, because she said the 16th century, which would be the 1500s Renaissance. Okay. Uh, it was okay to be fat at that time because people didn't have food. So if you were fat, that was an indication that you did have food. And that was like an attractive trait. And I also want to point out that even though these people want to clarify that it's like an American thing that we think that being fat is not a good thing. I want to like really emphasize this, that there is not a better place on the world to be fat. There is just not. Okay. And it, there, you can go to like any European country. You can go to like Asian countries, dude. They do not, they do not incentivize you being fat. These countries are literally completely opposite when it comes to accessibility options for being overweight. All right. So when I hear these people say this shit, I always think, okay, first of all, you are so lucky that you can even say these words in general in a country that even allows you to be a fat to begin with, right? And then, secondly. I don't think that black women are fat because they're black. Like, that's a ridiculous claim. That is a crazy-ass claim. And I understand why they say this because they try to, like, prove a point of, oh, like, black people are just naturally fat. Therefore, like, if you think that being thin is something you should strive for, you are actively trying to, you are actively trying to negate fat black women because they're just naturally fat. Therefore, you're racist, which is a dumbass fucking claim. Um... Even if that was true, and fat women were just, I mean, black women were just fat default, that shouldn't disincentivize you to lose weight because fat women that are black are also fat. Like, that's ridiculous. That Even if that was true, it, that'd be crazy to say. Um, you should probably be still prioritizing your health, even if black women were just fat default, which I don't agree with. But, uh, and then, like, dude, have you ever, like, seen African people, dude? They're not fat. And you could say, okay, but yeah, David, that's because they're malnutritioned. Like, they don't have a lot of food over there. True, but, like, go to the places where they do have food. Like, most of them are not fat. It's just a culture. Um, here in America, we incentivize, like, big portion sizes. We incentivize, like, big plates. We incentivize, like, a lot of food, really high-calorie foods. In other countries, it's just not like that. So, anyway. However, during the 18th century, when race science became more popular, this... Uh, actually, what this is saying is, like, when when the Industrial Re Revolution started and people could prioritize on... Because, like, a lot of people don't understand this, but, like, for all of time, you had to do everything, right? You had to be a farmer. You had to make your own clothes. You had to build your own house. You had to do everything by yourself. And then when the Industrial Revolution happened, people could specialize. And then you could, like, okay, so... I'm going to make clothes, but more specifically, I'm going to sew the clothes while you put the top half together and this other guy puts the bottom half together and I'm just going to sew those two things together. That's what people, that's what, that's what the, the specialization came in. People could actually do other things. You could be a lawyer. You could be a this, you could be a that. You didn't always have to be a farmer. Cause like, if you guys didn't know this before, I believe like the 17, before like the 18th century, everybody was like the majority of people on the planet were just farmers. That was like the number one thing because you had to put food on your family. Otherwise they would just die. So it was like super incentivized to do that. So nobody could just, you couldn't just do whatever you wanted. Nowadays you can, because we have food. And what's really great about that is that we have less farmland being used every day. 
and we're producing more and more food on that less farmland, which is like really amazing, like something that people don't talk about. But the reason why we don't incentivize people being fat nowadays is because we have an abundance of food, like literally so much food. We have fat homeless guys, right? And because of that, you should probably be you should probably be trying to prioritize that if there is so much food, it's not a good idea to eat all of the food, right? Because it's like you're just basically feeding into lesser instincts at that point. Um, it's like being in a gay nightclub. Instead of focusing on one BBC, you focus on all of them. And you go into the fucking bathroom and have black guys lined up against the wall. And you just run your face against all of them. Look, quantity over quality at the end of the day. That's what I believe in for most things. And if you want to suck on 15 black dudes, you can, but I would really prioritize the best black dude, if that makes any sense, in my opinion. And the same thing here, like it should be really realistically more so about the quality of the food that you're eating because the, the you know, it's always good to stuff your mouth full of things that are really good tasting stuff, but really low quality food. But if you really ultimately want to get the best out of it, you go for the quality over the quantity of the food. You can get way more out of the food compared to eating like 50 million things. This is when, during the 18th century, when race science became more popular. This is when evolutionary scientists began dividing races by physical attributes. And one attribute that was stereotyped and assigned to blackness was also fatness. Now, obviously, black bodies come in many shapes and sizes, but they liked this idea of assigning fatness to blackness because it was a sign of laziness. This I don't think being fat is most definitely a sign of laziness. I'm not contributing black people to be lazy, obviously, but she's right in, the, in that particular sense. Being fat, if you're fat and you don't care about being fat or it's just like a normal thing for you, then fine, whatever. I mean, I would still consider that to be lazy because your body is literally being negatively affected every single day. But if you want to live like that, it's your life, you whatever you want. I inherently don't even have a problem with people being fat. I just think that if you're going to be on the internet and you're going to complain about it or people are going to tell you, hey, uh, you're fat, that's not a good thing. And then you make videos like this saying like, oh yeah, it's rooted in anti-fat bias or it's rooted in blackness or it's rooted in white supremacy and things like that. Like, I'm going to call you out on it because this is like some really, really disgusting rhetoric. But you can say it. I really love when they do say this stuff because it's like indefensible points. And I promise you, if they ever actually had an argument with like anybody that even knew remotely anything oppositing these particular values, they could, they just, they just completely collapse. So you keep saying it. Honestly, keep saying it. I think it's awesome. Please, uh, shows off how ignorant you are. This also coincided with a time where Protestant identity was being closely aligned with the idea of abstaining. So thinness became a moral good. It is a moral good, 100%. And I, I say that because, look, when you're fat, and especially if you have families, and especially at this time, right? At this particular time she's talking about, families were deeply incentivized. And even now, to a certain degree, I know a lot of people nowadays don't really care about children, and they think they're, like, stupid or whatever. Personally speaking, I think children are great people. Um, one day I hope to have maybe one or two children, and hopefully I'll be a good father or whatever. But I think that definitely having even even if you want to take the children out of it just having the ability to take care of family members or people around you it's going to be severely impeded especially if you are yourself overweight because that is going to be something that's going to negatively affect your health and it's going to negatively affect you just doing basic human being tasks so if you need to take care of somebody around you or somebody needs to do something and they need you to do it you might not be able to do it or at the bare minimum it might be very difficult for you to do it like i.e amber lynn right Amberlynn literally has gone on record. I don't know when you're seeing this video, but there's an Amberlynn Reed video of her literally saying that she cannot physically go outside or do things with the person that she's with because it's physically impossible for her to find a particular like those. Uh, what are those things called? Like the scooters at the scooters at like um, fast food or uh, supermarkets or whatever. You know what I'm talking about? Those scooters. Uh, those things are really fast, by the way. I remember when I, when I used to work at this one place. They used to try to get me to go on those scooters because sometimes people would take them out into the parking lot for some reason, and I would drive them back. I would literally do like some Mario Kart racing thing. I would drive them from like zigzagging it all the way across the entire parking lot, dude, because it was a giant parking lot, and it would be so much fun, dude. But um, yeah, dude, if you don't have one of those, it's like incapable. And think about that. If you're so fat that you cannot you physically can no longer go upstairs or you physically or if you at the bare minimum it's very difficult for you to go upstairs you don't think it's going to negatively affect you or the people around you in any particular type of any any significant way 100% it is 100% so it is a moral failing um if you're just 
if you're just looking at it in the sense of like, oh, I'm just worrying about myself or like this is my life. I'm going to do whatever I want. That's a very, very um, – I would go as far as to say that's that's a very ignorant and very childish way of thinking about it because, no, it's not just about you. Uh, are you going to really tell me that you don't have people around you that rely on you? Are you going to really tell me that there aren't friends, family, or relationships that you care about that what the other person is going to need you to be responsible or take accountability for yourself? That's like – it's such a dumb take, dude. In my opinion, if you want to be like a real man or like a real woman, dude, it's going to 100% – come down to the things that you don't want to do and doing those particular things not because you don't not because you want to do those things but because you do not want to do those things that's what really makes you a strong independent powerful individual so this was another reason that evolutionary theorists wanted to associate fatness with blackness so if you agree that like black people are not inherently fat and but this argument point is at one point in time, we saw fatness as a negative thing due to the prospect of fat people being related or having some type of connection to black people. Therefore, if you want to lose weight or if you think that losing – if you try to lose weight or you think about losing weight, that is linked to fat – that is linked to anti-blackness. But you already agree that that's not actually the truth, meaning that black people are not inherently fat because they're black. How far back do you want to go? Like how far back? Because like this is what? She's talking about some shit that was from back, back like 500 years ago, 600 years ago, and then even 200 years ago. How far back? I hate it when people do this because it's like they never have a definitive case to accurately like I need to know the borders. OK, because if you're going 500 years back, why not go a thousand years back? Why not go 2000? Why not go 100,000 years back? Like, why are we stopping at the, the 600 mark? Why are we stopping at the 200 mark? Why there? These people never have an actual answer. It's just convenient for them to pick out this one particular time and in, in scenario in life where this was seen as a negative thing and they're going to latch onto it because they know that this is where they get their case. But if anybody pointed this out and went, hey, what about like 200 years before that? What about like 800 years before that where it was like totally okay to be fat or like it had nothing to do with being black? Like when people didn't even see each other as racist. Like what do you think about that? And they go, oh, well, nope, can't do it. I just – I don't know. Like why do you choose that? I mean I know why but – Okay, whatever, dude. By the way, this isn't your makeup shade. You're too light in the face compared to the rest of your body. Because then they could align that with immorality. Just do your homework. I just do my homework, dude. Can you believe her saying that? I just learned from a mutual that the guy that created the BMI scale, which determines obesity, was a mathematician. This is a stupid piercing, man. Okay, like, okay, I get this one, but it kind of seems a little bit impractical because I feel like it'd be touching my top lip and I wouldn't like that. This one is just dumb, right? Can we just agree on that? This is just stupid, dude. I would, I would feel like somebody would just grab it and just rip it off, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I did one of the reasons why I don't like piercings is because they're like a vulnerability point and I'm always like trying to look around and see if anybody's going to pull a knife or has like their hands in their pockets. Like I'm always hyper aware of that. Like if you ever see me in conversation on the street with somebody, I'm always like looking around trying to like be aware of my surroundings because I don't want to die. Okay. Like I've had knives and guns pulled on me before. So I'm like always hyper aware or at least I try to be hyper aware as much as I possibly can. So I don't know. Anyway. Um, she apparently didn't get the notice. You need thick eyebrows now, okay? Not even a biologist? I, I think it's, like, really interesting when people point out that this guy wasn't a biologist or whatever. But, like, people got to understand that, like, at one point in time, I don't know when this guy was born or whatever, but I'm guessing probably in the early 1800s. People were just kind of, like, everything at that age, right? Like, dudes were literally, like, philosophers. They were dentists. They were, like, hair salons. Dude, you could literally go to, like, the – you can go to the – you go in and get a shave, and then that guy would also diagnose you with some kind of like I don't know, like lymphedema or some shit like that. He would he, that guy would be the guy that do, like donated, sorry, not donated, but he would diagnose you with problems because like everybody was everything at that time, and you didn't really need like certifications, and if you did, it was like something very very light. So things were different at that time. All right, dude. Just because this guy wasn't like a, I don't know whatever you think he, a biologist, that doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean he didn't know what he was talking about. He just probably didn't have the certifications for that shit. Anyways. He was also a sociologist and his main focus was human variance to find the average. I think it's like, it doesn't really matter, dude. Like, you know, the guy that found the city of Troy was not an archaeologist. He was just a guy with a lot of money. And he was like, dude, I need to find the city of Troy because this shit would be so cool. So he went to where he thought Troy was and he literally just brought TNT and just started blowing up the whole area, which is actually really, really bad because he destroyed like a lot of the things that we could use in order to like actually see what those things were. 
So, yeah, it's just really funny. Like, back in that time period, like, in the early 1700s, late 1700s, um, early 1800s, dude, people just kind of did shit because there was, like, no government intervention. Like, there was no checks and balances in place for people to just do stuff, right? Nowadays, it's a lot more restrictive, which is a good thing and a bad thing. But back then, yeah, people just kind of did stuff. Like, that guy literally went to, I don't even know. I think, it, where, where was Troy, dude? Somewhere in, like, the West Bank? I don't fucking know, dude. I have no idea. But he went there with TNT and just started blowing shit up. And he didn't even know that, like, he found the remnants, which was, like, GG. But still, he took, like, he found, like, jewelries and shit like that. And he just gave them to his wife. Like, ancient, <laughs> ancient Trojan fucking jewelry and shit like that. Ancient Mycenaean jewelry. And he would just give it to his wife. He's like, oh, guess what? I just found this. It's, like, 2,000 years old or something like that. Here you go. And his wife was like, oh, my God, period, slay. And they never found it ever again. Like, literally, it's never been found ever again. She wore it, like, four times, and then she died. And then she, like, I guess nobody ever found it ever again. I don't know. The point I'm making is, like, at some point, people just kind of did shit. And that could be a good thing and a bad thing. But it's just the truth. Like, people just kind of did stuff for a long time. The normal, the average man? There is an average man. If you take, like... If you go through a wide portion of society and then you just basically average that out um, however you want, like in the middle areas, then yeah, you'll find the average dude. And that's roughly what guys are like. And it's the same thing with women. Like you find the rough idea and like you can do that in particular societies. Like obviously here in America, we're fatter. But if you went to like, I don't know, Korea, I'm sure that you can just take all these different groups of people, which we already do already. Like if you look up average weight in korea average weight in america average weight in china average weight in whatever and then like you just put all that stuff together and then you get the averages based off of all those averages then you can probably find the average across the board of men women whatever the fuck like yes there is an average obviously and we usually i don't know why these people have such an obsession with problems with averages there is gonna have to be averages there's gonna have to be there's gonna have to be generalities there's gonna have to be like okay we think roughly this is where this stuff is because there's no way we can, like, super hyper-focus on one particular person and not focus on the wider up. Like, everything's going to be in generalities. Like, I know these people have a big problem when they get, like, insurances or whatever. And, like, being fat is going to 100% impede your ability to get insurance or it's going to raise your rates significantly higher. And the reason for that is because fat people are at a higher risk of death. So, therefore, if you go and get insurance, it's going to be way more expensive. And it's nothing against you. It's just the fact that you're fat and you fit into this wide spectrum of people that are also fat that have all these illnesses. So, yeah, dude, 100%. You, you're going to have to – if you don't want to suffer from this, so you don't want to be a part of that particular type of group, lose some weight? I don't know. Which many sociologists agree is the root of eugenics. People have no problem with eugenics when it comes to things like, uh, <laughs> like everybody's a eugenics, everybody. Like you look at somebody and you go, that guy's really tall. I want to have kids with him. Or at least I think he'd be a good potential candidate for me. And I think eugenics is a problem, obviously, if you start like, negating particular races or whatever the fuck like I, I i obviously think everybody should have sex with whoever they want to you know that personally i'm a snow bunny not like a real snow bunny i'm not like going out of my way not for men either like i'm not saying i'm a snow bunny for dudes i know that's how you use it like i'm not saying that i want to suck on black guys but i'm saying like i'm a snow bunny in the sense of like i've only ever dated black women so i know what i'm talking about here right um bona fide snow bunny right not like purposefully though i just kind of seems like whenever i throw out my rod and roll it back in it just happens to be a black woman but regardless it, eugenics is only a problem when people eugenics is true to a certain degree like if you date a guy that has tall genetics odds are the kids probably gonna come out with tall genetics too and things such and so forth like i often tell people that are very very attractive that they need to call up their parents right now and thank them for the outrageously amazing genetics that they were bestowed upon and i don't know why they have such an issue with it like in general it's not inherently a bad thing it's just something to acknowledge it's like a red flag like it's just something to acknowledge and how eugenics started because of this man i doubt that he was the precipice for eugenics eugenics has been a thing for like thousands of years dude like even go back to like <laughs> go back to like ancient egypt and shit dude they were doing that same shit uh maybe they didn't have like the same understanding that we do now but they have like a very ba very basic understanding of what it was mm -hmm. I don't want to give this guy all the credit though because we have to be real that chattel slavery was a big factor in the creation of fat phobia the association between fatness and blackness is something that has existed for hundreds of years and was a way of 
I just want to know why they they only go back a hundred years. Like, bro, what, go back farther than that. Then, if you why do you want to stop there? Like, I get it, the transatlantic slave. Like, I get it. I really get it. I understand. Terrible, disgusting. I'm gonna take the hot take and say slavery was bad, obviously. But like, I always wanted to know, like, why don't you go further back? Like, why don't you go back like a thousand years ago, or like I don't know, like two thousand or four thousand? Like, why now? Why do you stop now? You know why? Because it's convenient, and this is like where their points stop. Condemning black people by seeing our weight as a moral failing and. Like, like, don't get me wrong. I'm not, like, one of these people that's going to, be, like, completely gloss over the fact that, like, black people had a great, uh, a horrible time, like, transcending the ladder here in America. Like, I understand it was very, very bad. And, like, even up to a certain point, it still negatively affected you. Like, I'm not one of these people that's going to say that, right? Because, like, even I know. When somebody says, like, oh, there's societal and, um, you know, like, the, the thing, the things that hold back black people for, like, literal generations. And some people will go, oh, no, that's not true. That's obviously not true. Black people can still do um, the things that they need to do in America, which is true to a certain degree. But, like, hey, listen, if your parents and your grandparents, right, um, were not able to buy a house because it was literally impossible for them to buy a house because they were black through redlining or whatever, and then you're telling me that, like, they had all the chances that you had, even though you grew up in a you know, a two-parent household, and you had no problem getting a house loan, and you had no problem doing this and this and this. Like, you have to at least understand that there's going to be some type of, like, miscommunication there. Like, people are not going to look at that and go, okay, yeah, obviously, black people and white people are equal. Like, they are under the law nowadays, and, like, you know, even now, there, there could be some systemic issues and things like that, but I'm not even one of these people that, like, sits there. Like, I always look at the nuances. Like, I'm willing to see it from all aspects. And you will never find somebody that is not... I am so charitable to these people, dude. Like, I'm willing to understand their points better than they are. But that's... I'm just giving some, like, background there. That we are insatiable and therefore need to be tamed. Anti-fat bias and weight stigma have historical roots in racism and white supremacy. Every time I say this, I get some really weird comments. So just to be really clear, no, I've never heard anyone say you're racist for wanting to lose weight. Wouldn't it be really, really weird if I did have a video of somebody saying those exact words that are in these particular types of communities? They just hate them. Like there's like this weird hatred that's, it feels almost akin to racism. This is not like racism, it is racism. Anti-fatness is rooted in anti-blackness. And the reason why people are pursuing thinness is because they're pursuing proximity to whiteness. They're Isn't it crazy to even sit there and make this claim, dude? Losing weight is gonna make sure, that, that claim is that if you lose weight, you will be more close to whiteness. Be meaning that if you're black, right? If you try to lose weight while black, then I guess like you're sometime, I, I don't know, like, does this mean that you're like mixed then? What if you're like a solid black guy, you know, like you're really black and then you try to lose some weight. Does that mean that you're a light skin? Do you start licking your lips then and rubbing your hands together like this? Does that mean, does that what you, is that what you start doing, dude? Is that light skin energy? How does that, how does, how exactly does this logic stream even work? Because if you are working under this assumption, you are default assuming that black people are fat. That is a craziest thing to say. And in the process of doing that, you are literally saying that you are racist because obviously black people are not default fat. That is a crazy ass thing to say. And there are many diverse groups of black people as well. Not the ones that are only in America. You know, there are other ones all across the entire, like, I don't even know why I'm justifying this shit, but the point that the other person just made, uh, I think it was Abby, I don't know what her name was, is that this has never been said. This is this is a common thing. This is a very common thing, dude. These people genuinely believe that if you lose weight, you are actually racist, which is really, really interesting of a statement because like, if you wanted to lose weight for any other reason, like let's just say you wanted to lose weight because you wanted to look good or you wanted to become healthier, that's racism, which is crazy, dude. Can you imagine somebody saying like you're in the gym and they go like, hey, bro, just to let you know you're contributing to like white supremacy. And you're like, what? Dude, I'm just like dumbbell pressing right now. What are you talking about? Like, yeah, you're just racist just to let you know. Um, anybody that tries to lose weight intentionally is just like, that's just, that's just hatred towards black people. It's gross anti-blackness and the reason why people are pursuing thinness is because they're pursuing proximity to whiteness the reason why people hate fat people is because people hate black people and such a crazy take bro this woman's gotta be this guy this woman's has to have like this is not a normal take dude this is like extreme versions of what these people genuinely believe so i mean i'm not gonna sit here and say that this is like this is not the norm i wouldn't say this is the norm but if the claim previous if the claim previously was if you lose if you lose weight then you're racist this is exactly what this woman is saying okay in literally the same words like 
if you lose weight, you're pursuing you're pursuing whiteness and you're anti-black for losing right for losing weight is a crazy ass thing. That is literally what racism is. Okay, so I just find it interesting because like in the process of these people saying this particular stuff, they're trying to fight racism, right? Which is an admirable cause, but. In the process of doing that, you have become the very thing you swore to destroy, and now you are racist for assuming that all black people are fat and all white people are thin. That is crazy. That is absolutely disgusting. And just by just by pure numbers here, there in America, there are more fat people that are white than there are of any demographic. And you might say, David, that's because there are more white people in the country. Yeah, I know. That's exactly what I'm saying, though. Yeah, that's that's it. Yeah, it's the whole thing. But uh, anyway, doesn't matter. Let's continue to watch this cringe, this absolute cringe. The to whiteness. The reason why people hate fat people is because people hate black people. And I don't think many people hate fat people, though. I think that's a, I think that's a really, really outrageous claim. And appearing curvy or bigger is associated with blackness. Which is not true, by the way. Um, just because you're, bro, being bigger. I'm sick of this claim, dude. Being bigger does not automatically mean that you're curvier. Matter of fact, I don't think that there's very much correlation at all. You can be somebody that's like one. 30 or 120 as a woman and be curvy you don't have to be 250 to be curvy and matter of fact i would go as far as to say if you're 250 and you're curvy that's an anomaly that doesn't mean that you actually have curves most of the time it's just lumps and if you want to claim that you're curvy at 220 or 250 you can but no, most people would not consider that to be curvy i've met many women and i know this for a fact that generally speaking women that are thinner have more curves than women that are fatter so i don't even believe this point dude and by the way no just because you're black doesn't mean you're curvy i don't know what to tell you there are plenty of other women all around the world that do have features that are considered to be curvy that are not always going to be identified with being black that's a crazy thing people hate black people and appearing curvy or bigger is associated with blackness especially black women and that's why they're discriminated in the workplace it's like i don't even understand this like dialogue chain dude they're they're being discriminated against because they're curvy because they're fat because they're black like where do you even get this from and by the way what do you even mean they're being discriminated against in the workplace in what way are fat black out of shape curvy women being discriminated against the workplace they might be discriminated in the sense of like oh damn i wanted you to do this particular thing but it turns out that you're so fat that like the idea of you doing this uh, this particular work is not going to be feasible so i just didn't i didn't consider you for this position or you're literally not getting the job because you're fat which makes sense in a lot of cases because if you're fat then it's probably literally not possible for you to even do the job um i've never heard somebody especially in there look I'm not saying that it doesn't happen, but in 2024, I think it's very, very rare for an employer to see a very, very good candidate for a job position and look at that job and go, oh, this guy, this guy is so, he's he's going to make us so much money. He's going to be doing so, so much good work. He's going to print money for us, literally print. He's just such a, and he's only asking for like 100K. Ooh. He's a black man. And then slide it across the table. Nobody's doing that. Nobody. Nobody's doing that. Because you know what? Here in America, the only color that really matters is green. And people want to make a lot of money. And if you're hiring a guy and you're discriminated against him, even though this guy is literally going to make you hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. And the only reason why you told you you didn't want to hire this guy was because he's black. That's literally a detriment on your part. That guy is not going to make it in this capitalist society where it's only incentivized to make money. Why the fuck? Even if you were the most racist guy on the planet, it's literally, it would be more racist to hire the guy because then you can exploit him for work because he's such a money printing machine. I just don't understand. Like, personally speaking, if anything, you're just dumb if you if you don't hire a black guy because he's black. Like, if any, that's just what that means. And I, I just don't see that. Is associated with blackness, especially black women. And that's why they're discriminated in the workplace, um, overly sexualized. And I don't think that. I don't know, man. I've never heard that before. Like, black women being overly sexualized. According to the statistics that I've seen, black women are, like, the ones that are the most undesirable across the board, according to, like, dating statistics and sex statistics and things such and so forth. Um, I could be wrong on this, but I'm pretty sure, like, I know light skins, light skin women are, like, super incentivized. And this goes for men and women. But I don't really see... I don't see black women being overly sexualized in today's consumer market. I just don't see that very often. This has gone back for centuries and centuries. All systems of oppression, capitalism, sexism, racism, it all comes back to white supremacy. Which I just think that's interesting, though. I just, I don't know. Like, why does it always come back to white supremacy? Would it, like, would it, would it, what if this, like, what if capitalism was founded by a black guy? Like, what if it was, like, a group of black dudes that came together and were like, you know what, I think of the free market, I think that, 
like John Smith or whoever the guy was that created capitalism or whatever, the father of capitalism, when you find out he was black, like, would you still say the same shit? I would love to know what these guys, I would love to know, like, how far along these people actually think about this stuff. Because if it's something as simple as, like, all this stuff, all systems of oppression are rooted in white supremacy is a crazy ass thing to say like what like credit checks like what if you go to the fucking what if you go to buy like a car and the, the guy's like oh yeah like we, we could get you this car but like you have no credit and your credit's like really bad so like we're not gonna do that like would you just claim racism there i guess maybe i don't know like everything dude like all systems of oppression I, that's it's just a crazy ass claim dude and it's too it's too overboard too systems of oppression capitalism sexism racism dude capital you know what's really interesting dude systems of oppression right you're you're talking about systems of oppression and then you use capitalism as one of the systems of oppression where capitalism in my opinion has been like the most i would say successful uh social the, the most econ most successful economic structure we've ever had ever and it's the one that's, like, even making you guys fat to begin with. Like, we're so successful under capitalism that it's literally making you guys fat. Like, have, have these people, like, never thought about that? And here's the thing. Like, I'm not even necessarily for capitalism. Like, I'd be totally fine if capitalism didn't exist and there was something better than capitalism. Like, I would have no problem going. If there was something better than capitalism, all right, fuck capitalism. But it just turns out that capitalism just seems to be the best. If you have something that's better than capitalism, then I'll probably go with you on that. But I've yet to see that. So... Like, I just think it's so interesting that they go to these particular things and they go, yeah, it's all white supremacy. Uh, really, dude? Even sexism? So, like, if a black guy walked up to a girl and was like, damn, girl, damn, that ass, that ass so fat and shit. I love it. I love ass on my face and shit like that. I love ass. Would you go, oh, man, that black guy is, that's a white supremacist right there. That's what you would say? Like, a black guy doing that? Like, he's objectifying a woman, therefore he's white? He's a white supremacist? How does this even work exactly, dude? Like, it doesn't make sense. Even baseline, it doesn't make sense. Okay, whatever, dude. Um, it all comes back to white supremacy, which is the foundation of the fabric of America and rules every sector and aspect of our society. Yeah, these people are way too far gone, man. I just, like, there's nothing to say about these people, man. They're they're just gone. They're, they're literally, there's no returning for these people, man. But anyway, let's go back to the Abbey clip. What's meant by saying this is that throughout history, fat bodies were praised and even admired in various cultures and time periods. Yeah, this is a really disingenuous claim, dude. Like, so what? So what if fat bodies were... Dude, yes, they were They were praised in particular time periods because it was like, oh my god, you're so fat. That must mean you have a lot of food. It's not It's not the fact that they were fat, what, which is what was being praised. It was the fact that they had the money or the resources to become fat. And then also, I don't understand the claim of like, oh, throughout all of time, this thing was like praised. But why is it not praised any longer? Uh, can you say that about like anything else, dude? Like what about like slavery? Like, you know, like slavery was like really big for like all of time. But like now nobody fucks with it anymore, right? Is that, like, cool? Is that, like, an okay thing to do now? Like, should we just do that because it was done, like, a while ago? No, that's a dumb claim, right? Obviously, that's not... It's, it's like, you can't even use this claim in, like, any other scenario. I don't know why they bring it up as if, as if it means anything at all. Just because something was done 200 years ago or 2,000 years ago doesn't mean we should be doing it now. The fuck? <laughs> That is until the Enlightenment era when fat bodies became associated with black bodies. I think most of the people that agree now will look at why why do we deem fat people or fat bodies as something to not achieve or something that's negative? Well, it's probably because we have a lot of resources nowadays, especially in westernized countries. And because of that, um, because of the extra, extra resources and more food that we have now – uh, that means that you should probably be picking and choosing the food rather than just eating all of it. Like you would have been, you would have and should have done in a time period where food was not easy to come by, obviously, because if there's not a lot of food, you're going to fucking swallow everything you possibly can. And that's amazing. You should swallow that shit. Kind of like a, a, a dude in a gay party. Like you're going to swallow as much as you possibly can. That is okay, but in now in nowadays time periods, it's not incentivized because of what we know about being fat and what we know how it leads to death, how it leads to heart failure, how it leads to all these downstream negative effects of being fat. And then also, there's literally no benefit to just eating literally everything that you possibly can get your hands on, given the fact that food is right there. It's relatively cheap as well. So that's the reason why. Is especially the bodies. Yeah, of I don't think it has anything to do with being fat. I'm sure that at some point, maybe a group of people or somewhere, somebody might have believed that being fat, aka being black, was a thing. But like nobody, th nobody thinks that anymore. And just because, 
at what point do we like, oh, okay, we believed this thing for like a really long time and we were wrong about it. And now, even though we believe that thing, this, we still believe, by the way, we still believe that being fat, not good in the same way that you believe that being fat, not good, except the, the difference is now is like, you believe that it was not good because you were black. And now we believe it's not good because death, like, so like, just because the, the, the equal sign is the same, right? Like equals not good. The, the, the way you got there is changed. So I don't, I think it's very disingenuous to look at the reason why you got there here, which was like black people bad compared to now, which is like medical studies, factual state, factual statements and things such as so forth. Like, I think it's really disingenuous. An era when fat bodies became associated with black bodies, especially the bodies of black women. Later on, scientists who subscribed to beliefs like social Darwinism used body size as a marker of racial inferiority. And that perpetuated the idea that it's bad for white people, especially white women, to be fat because it would make them more like black people. <laughs> it's all from like one book too, by the way. Like they all have that fearing the black body book and then like that's their quotes. Like that's what they got. And there was like a wave of people that read this book at one point and like everybody was coming out and they were going like, oh my God, this is so racist. I can't believe that white people are white and I can't believe they're not fat. Like black people, black people are fat. Therefore, white people are and it, it, it's just really, really cringy, dude, because it's like if you only have one thing to go off of, dude, and like everything else points to, nah, this isn't really true, then you got to have at least some type of like, wait, wait, let me do more research than this. I highly encourage you to listen to Black Scholar. I don't, you know what, dude, this is such a bullshit thing to say. I highly encourage you to listen to Black Scholars as if Black Scholars are going to say anything different to white. Like, do you, this, you know how racist of a statement this is, dude? Do you know how fucked up of a statement this is to say, like, oh, yeah, listen to black scholars? Dude, do you think that, like, black scholars are going to say things that are different compared to white scholars because they're black? Why would you say that? Like, are black people believing things that are just not believable and that, like, you understand that that, that that doesn't make any sense? Like, what if, what if they, what if for all of time we knew that two plus two equals four, but you're saying that black scholars say two plus two equals three? So should we just believe black scholars because they're black? No, fuck no. I like that. I hate this fucking claim. No, absolutely not. Do not do not just do not just listen to black scholars because they're black. That's the worst thing you can do because it would make them more like black people. I highly encourage you to listen to black scholars who have talked about this subject extensively, like Dr. Sabrina Strengs, who wrote the book Fearing the Black Body, yeah, the racial the one the one person did origins of fat phobia. But there is something clearly wrong with the woman on the right. Definitely, dude. Jordan, I'm happy that Jordan is getting her lipedema down packed, dude, because this shit literally look like some watermelons, dude. There's literally not, though. Dude, that woman is literally dying, okay? Can we just be honest here for a second? If you're going to sit there and say that this is not healthy or this is healthy, you're fucking, you're mentally challenged, okay? Like, how can you see this and see, like, nothing but suffering? Something clearly wrong with the woman on the right. There's literally not, though. People like you need to get over your internalized fat phobia. You need to get over your delusion, dude. How do you look at that woman and see anything other than suffering, bro? You're you're diluted so heavily that you think that you're right because... Man. And your internalized ableism. <laughs> and then I saw you just posted a picture about healing and, like, holding yourself accountable. When are you going to do that for yourself? Why can't you stand the fact... Ah. Oh. Ah, oh, ah, oh, what are you talking about? Holding yourself accountable? Dude, you're literally sitting there looking at a woman that has watermelons for fucking ankles and you're telling me that she's not unhealthy. Are you, what are you talking about? What are you fucking, and you're telling me that she has to hold herself accountable while you said that defending the person that has literal lipedema? Okay, okay she was right she was literally right i believe like a month or two after that video came out jordan came out and said she had lipedema which is literally an unhealthy condition so she was literally right and you're over here trying to defend it because you like want to be the social justice warrior and defend that fucking shit because it seems fashionable like oh yeah i'm gonna say the right thing i'm gonna say the right thing morally speaking to the group of people even though i know it's incorrect like you I refuse to believe, I really refuse to believe this, that people genuinely think, when they looked at that picture of Jordan Underwood, right, when all the people were defending this picture, I do, I think most people, most people, I'm going to say most here, I'm going to go as far as say most, agree that this is unhealthy, but they were just saying that it's not unhealthy to 
I don't know, to try to push back against the status quo, to push back against the quote unquote fat phobes, which is really, really disgusting to say, because all that really means is like, you're not actually defending the person. You're not actually defending the condition. What you're actually doing is you're just saying what's favorable to your particular side, which is really, really gross. It's like somebody being in a relationship with you or not, not. It's not like somebody being in a relationship with you. It's like somebody that wants to be in a relationship with you. And they're they're saying things like, oh, they're just saying things really, really disingenuously. Like, oh, I can really help you out with this. And like, I can do a lot of things for you. But in reality, they don't actually want to do any of that stuff for you. They're just saying that to get into a relationship with you. You know what I'm talking about? There's a reason why, like, for instance, simps will sit there and go, oh, my God, I did so much. I did so much for this girl. Like, I sat there and I, I listened to her problems. I... I, I hung out with her. I did all this stuff. And, and, and like she just avoids me. And she doesn't talk to me. Like, I, this is so fucked up. And I, I think, no, you did that to get something out of her. Like, you did. You weren't doing that because you were a good person. You weren't doing that because you were a good friend. You weren't doing that because you actually cared for that person. You were doing that to get the end result of being in a relationship or smell her vagina. Like, that's what it was, right? That's really what it comes down to. And I hate it. I hate it. I hate it when people say that shit because... Just be honest with me, okay? Own it. You fucking did that shit because you were selfish, which is fine. In the same way that these people were saying that Jordan was okay and fine, even though they knew deep down that Jordan wasn't fine. They were just saying that shit because they knew it was favorable to the, the organizations and the societies that they were a part of, which is really gross, by the way. It's the same shit for simps. It's the same, it's the same shit for here. It's gross. It's disgusting behavior. And it's fine if you want to have that disgusting behavior. I just wish you guys would own up to it. Oh. Why can't you stand the fact that fat people wear underwear? I'm okay with fat people wearing underwear. Matter of fact, I prefer it. Maybe a couple extra pairs, too. Why do you think it's fun to make fun of people's bodies on the internet? Come on now. Come on now. You ever been on the internet? Don't fucking lie, dude. Don't fucking lie. And nobody was making fun of that body, by the way. That's really, that's really crazy to say that somebody was making fun of that body. She literally said she wasn't unhealthy. Okay? She, my bad. She literally said she was unhealthy. So, if you count that as making fun of somebody's body... You need to you need to get off the internet there because like I can't even help you. There's literally nothing I can do for you. Why don't you respect people for who they are and how they are? Because if somebody this is a dumb this is a really dumb point. Respect people for who they are and how they are. So would you respect if you're let's say hypothetically you knew somebody in your family that was a crackhead, right? A literal crackhead and he was like, I don't know, gargling dicks behind the fucking truck stop to get a quick hit of some methamphetamines or some shit like that. And you walked up to that person, he said, "Listen, I need you to respect me. I need you to respect for who I am and this is just the life I'm going to live." Would you respect that person or would you go, "Hmm, nope, I don't want to anymore. I'm going to have to tell you what the problem is here or you just don't talk to them anymore. That is a dumb fucking take. And I'm, I just hate it. I hate it so fucking heavily because all this is doing is virtue signaling to the people that are clearly unhealthy to make it seem like their bodies or what they're doing to themselves are perfectly fine. When in any other scenario, you would never, you would never, and I'm going to repeat it. You would never use this in any other scenario. Just Again, own it. Just fucking own it, dude. Stop saying things that you don't even believe in. This is a fucking untrue statement. Because if you did believe that, then you would have no problem hanging out with crackheads. You would have no fucking problem telling some. Just, just tell people on the street. Yeah, it's totally fine to suck dick for money. It's totally fine to literally have facials, to, to buy marijuana or something like that. Whatever you want to do. The point I'm making is this person doesn't actually even believe that point. She's virtue signaling really fucking hard to make it seem like she's saying something profound. And she doesn't even actually believe what she's saying. And I've already seen you try to make the excuse, I'm worried about their health. No, you're fucking not. That's just an excuse to try to hide your fat folks. I think it's really like, listen, if somebody is literally genuinely trying to help somebody, even through the realm of being a provocateur upon the internet, that is still help. And I think that it's a really bad excuse to sit there and go, oh, you're not actually trying to help that person. You're just trying to, you're just using it as an excuse to, like, it's too easy. It's a cop-out. It literally is a cop-out. Like, okay, well, it's true. I'm making videos on the internet. And I think that this is an entertaining topic. But two things could be the same simultaneously. Two things could be, uh, two, two things can be true simultaneously. I could be making videos about this person in a performative nature and a provocative nature. And I can also want the best for that person, right? I can want both of those things. And if you don't think that's possible, then why are you even making this video? Because you're defending Jordan, right? And you're making a video. You didn't have to make a video. You could have like silently protested. I don't know how you would have done that, but sure, you could have done that shit. But the point I'm making is, again, you don't even believe what you're saying. If you're going to sit there and go, oh, you shouldn't make videos on fat people because it's literal fat phobia, then why can't it be true for you not to make videos on the people that are making videos on the fat phobia that they're having? Like, it just doesn't make any sense. Like, how can these people say the shit that they say and not look in the mirror while they do it? 
Fat phobia, like most social phobias, is ultimately the cause of systemic oppression. Fat bodies have been racialized. You know, I really disagree, dude. I, I'm sorry, dude, if I keep interrupting, but I genuinely disagree. Like, there is really almost no reason why we should go to this claim nowadays, dude. If we're talking about fatness is a problem only because society tells it's a problem, first of all, almost everything that we know about what we know is because of society. So, like, it's a really weird thing to say that. Um, but even then... Dude, we know that there is literally negative implications to being fat. Like, even if you wanted to stretch out past the human being, go to, like, those monkeys in, like, Indonesia that literally eat, like, Skittles and, like, Doritos and shit like that. That can't even climb trees anymore because they're so fat and they don't need to actually hunt anymore. They're, like, their natural instincts have been so incredibly impeded right now because of the amount of food that people just throw at them. And they just eat that fucking disgusting, like, 7,000 calorie food. Like, by the way, these monkeys only need to eat, like, 400 calories a day. And people are feeding them Dorito bags that are like 400 of that. So they're already eating more than – they're going to not stop eating too either. They're going to keep eating. So even just speaking in like the animal kingdom, dude, fat animals are not a good thing. Like fat cats, fat dogs, these d d dudes literally can't even move, walk, jump. They can't do anything that these regular – like you normal, normal activities that these cats, dogs, other animals should be doing, they cannot do. So I think it's like really, really disingenuous to sit there and go, the reason why we don't like fatness is because – we're racist. That cannot be true, given the fact that we literally have animals that we incentivize not to be fat because their quality of life is severely impeded if they are fat. So I think it's such a fucked up point to say. Since you guessed it, slavery. Fat phobia stems from an Enlightenment era belief that fatness is actually linked to savagery and racial inferiority. You know, again, like even if this was true, right? Even if it was true that like at some point we believe the reason why fatness was bad was because it was bred out of the belief that fat people were black and vice versa that's not what we believe anymore and it shouldn't be disincentivized to lose weight because of something we no longer believe like that's fucking dumb that's a stupid ass thing to say which has then subsequently been used to subjugate black bodies into slave labor exploitation i don't think that that was the primary reason though like i don't think that people were going oh we're enslaving black people because they're fat i don't think that was the reason i think that i mean i'm sure you could find somebody that believed that but i think the primary reason why fat the primary reason why black people were enslaved was because most people here in the United States believe that black people, I wouldn't even say most because it was a touch and go topic, right? A lot of people that did enslave black people thought that black people were not actually human beings, right? So they decided that because they were not human beings that they could be property. That was the primary reason. It wasn't because they were fat. That's a crazy ass thing to say. And I'm sure, like I said, somewhere you'll find somebody that said, oh, I'm enslaving this, these people not because they're black, but because they're black and fat. Like, okay, sure, I guess. Like, I'm sure you could find that, but it's like, I don't give a fuck, honestly. Like, the main reason was because they didn't look at them as people and they thought they could own them as property. Patient, fetishization, and sexualization. Slave masters use the fatness found in black female bodies as an excuse to say, those women are deserving of rape, but you, your slender self, you're not. Yeah, I disagree. I just don't, I, I just really don't. I, I don't know exactly where they're getting this from, dude. That's a crazy ass thing to say. I disagree. I just disagree. I think that I don't think uh, just maybe somebody has some statistics. I don't know if they were like throwing these statistics around during like the 1700s, 1800s, dude. But if somebody does have some statistics of fat black bodies during those particular time periods, I would love to know because like I don't think that that shit was documented and I've never seen any evidence that black dudes or black women were just inherently fat when they got them from africa i've only ever seen the opposite of uh people that were in these countries were thinner because they had to be so i don't know exactly where they're getting this logic from and why they would go so far to like prove this particular type of point i mean it's already bad dude it's already bad enough that slavery happened right and nobody is defending it right so you see this and the fact that you have to go even further to try to make it seem even worse and it doesn't even make sense. All right. Since abolition, the U.S. government has tried to pin the obesity epidemic and all comorbid diseases like heart disease and diabetes on blackness and on the black population. As uh, where are you getting that from? What the fuck are you talking about? Since abolition is crazy, bro. I don't even think obesity was a problem, a realistic problem until like the late 60s, if I'm being honest with you. I'm pretty sure it wasn't. Like, if there were obese people pre-1960, it was an anomaly. Whereas, like, post-1960, it was 100% a 
it was like a normative thing. Like as the as the food industry came up and things such and so forth, whatever. Yeah, dude, one hundred percent. People were getting fatter and fatter and fatter. I think like the apex was like the early two thousands, right? Um, abolition, if I'm not I'm fucking correct, dude, was it like the eighteen eighties, bro? When did the Civil War fucking end, dude? Like, dude, this is such a crazy ass fucking thing. People weren't fat in the late 1800s. People weren't fat in the early 1900s. They just weren't, okay? And I'm talking generally speaking. So this is a new phenomenon, and new as I mean like the last 60 years, which is relatively new in, the, in like the spectrum of humanity. So no, I disagree fundamentally that like since abolition, people were looking at fatness as a black issue. That's fucking dumb. That is literally dumb. As a way to say our health is like heart disease. Since abolition, the U.S. government has tried to pin the obesity epidemic. And I don't even think like since – I don't even think the U.S. government really gave a fuck about that shit that time period, dude. I, I could be wrong, dude, but I mean from the research that I've done – on the antebellum south and, and, and the post antebellum south and like the civil war and things such and so forth because like i'm i'm pretty well researched on these particular topics man I, and maybe it's because i haven't looked into these very very niche subjects right because like most people that are looking into these like errors in time are not looking at fatness like i don't know who the fuck is like that's such a weird thing to look at especially if you're looking at like slavery in the civil war like who the fuck ever said like oh yeah um have you done your research on the civil war and you go like yeah abraham lincoln you know fucking slavery and you know all this other stuff and then they go yeah but like what about the fat people and you go like oh what, what the fucking fat people what are you talking about what fat people and you're like you're racist i knew it you're fucking racist like nobody's talking about that shit because it's probably irrelevant like nobody probably whatever man all comorbid diseases like heart disease and diabetes on blackness and on the black population as i don't think anybody's doing that like in 2020 dude especially like in the last like i would even say 30 40 50 years dude most people know that it's probably because you're eating too much and it, you know all that extra food on your body is going to cause a lot more problems and things like nobody's fucking going oh yeah the reason why people are dying of fucking high blood pressure is because they're black like who the fuck who the fuck is saying that? The way to say our healthcare system is overwhelmed by those people, and those are your tax paying dollars. Most, like I said before, like most people that are fat in the United States are white, so this doesn't even make sense. Yeah, uh, like I was saying before, dude, it really isn't like America that these people should be worried about. Like I know in the UK, their their healthcare system is being taxed like omega level hard right now because of fat people. Same thing in Canada, because fat people do have way more issues compared to thinner people and it only makes sense that these people would be having more issues because you guys are literally every single day experiencing taxation on your body that doesn't need to be there it's like living your life on hard every single day for no other reason than i want to eat more food than the next person over and i get it like food tastes really really good it does but it shouldn't taste so good that you're literally putting your life at a detriment every single day like isn't it better to have a higher quality of life than it is to eat three or four times more cheeseburgers in my opinion i think it's probably better to have a higher quality of life i'm sorry am i like controversial in saying that but it seems like these people are willing to make that sacrifice so incredibly often and or maybe they just don't realize that this is a sacrifice like no you can't also, you can't be good, healthy person and then also eat five times more than what you need to eat in a day. There's like, you have to have one or the other. There needs to be some compromising there, okay? And I'm sick of these people trying to make it seem like they can do both simultaneously. And then also coming up with the case that you're racist if you try to like lose weight. What are you fucking dumb? No, of course not, dude. If you want to lose weight and you're fat and you want a better quality of life, don't listen to these people and let them believe you. Let them let them tell you that you losing weight is somehow like centered in the realm of like some type of ism. You're not in any type of ism. You might be like a, a smart ism. Yeah, you're a smart ism. That's what you are. A smarty ism. Fat phobia, white supremacy. True. There you have it. True, true, hundred percent. Fat phobia, white supremacy. Listen, if you're if you're a black person and you decided to lose weight, white supremacist, you are a white supremacist. I can't even believe. So like for me personally, right? I've never really tried to lose weight because I've always been on the weight gain journey, right? Always trying to gain more muscle, always trying to gain more oomph in my body. So technically, I'm not, even by these people's logics, I'm not a white supremacist. Isn't that crazy, dude? Isn't that crazy? Because I've only ever been trying to because I started off really, really thin. So if anything, this just means that I am black. I'm black, I guess, right? Is that, that's not the, that's the correlation, right? I'm black. That's just what it is. I'm gonna tell you three things that has helped me have confidence as a plus size person. It's just crazy that you need like a tutorial to how to like, you know, here are three things to improve your life as a plus size person. This is like more gay than the time I had. I remember one time I was in middle school, dude. Was it middle school? 
I don't know what grade it was, actually. It might have been middle school or early high school, right? And I was friends with this guy, and I swear to God, this dude said some of the gayest shit I've ever heard in my life. This dude, real deal. I remember because, like, people were asking people, like, yo, bro, you be beating off, you be beating off. I've always never lied about it. Yeah, I beat my shit every single day. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. I be literally just slapping my shit around. I don't give a fuck, right? Whatever. I beat my shit like it owes me money. And some people would be like, no, 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 I would never, I would never beat my shit, I only fuck with bitches, I only fuck with women, women are the best, or whatever, right, it's some bullshit, you know you beat your meat, don't fucking lie, anyway, so there was this dude, right, and I remember I was talking to him, he was like, yo, I'm not gonna lie to you, bro, I didn't know what I was doing at first, and I was like, oh, yeah, me too, bro, I didn't know, I, you know, I, I don't know, it's just, you just start doing shit, right, and you get better along the way, of beating your shit up, right, and he was like, yeah, I had to look up a tutorial on how to do it, and I was like, what you mean you had to look up a tutorial? Like, what kind of, what do you mean? What are you talking about? you like, well, you watched some porn of a, a guy and a girl having sex? And he was like, nah, I watched a dude, like a tutorial on how to beat beat off. And I was like, that, what the fuck are you talking? I didn't say that at the time, but I, like, I heard what he said and I was like, oh yeah, I see what you're saying. I just kind of passed it by. But then like later, I, later that day, I remember going like, that's some gay ass shit. You were watching a grown man beating his meat as you were fucking, and you were trying to take like notes about that shit. Like, that's gay as hell, right? That's gay. That's gay. You can't just be beat. Bro, you can't just be meted out, right? Watching another man meet out as well. No no women, nothing. Just solid men. All men. Everybody in this is just men. He's beating his shit up. And you're over here with your meat in your hand. In the other hand, you got a notebook writing down the fucking notes. Like, you know what I'm talking about? Like, oh, yeah, grab that shit. Uh, stroke it. That's the, like, there's really only two motions, bro. Grab that shit and go up and down. That's it. Like, what are you even doing, bro? There's nothing else to it. Like, there's not, like, some hidden technique that you're going to learn from, like, Ra's al Ghul or some shit like that. Like, guess what? Like, when you have women beating off is always weird, right? Because it's like, you don't even know what's going on half the time. And when you talk to one woman about how she beats off, it's going to be completely different compared to how another woman beats off. But for dudes, it's the same shit. It's like, yeah, I grab my shit and I beat that shit up. That's really it. Like, you go up and down. I've never in my, well, there might be like a weird dude that probably beat his meat weird. I don't know. Like maybe he's doing it with sandpaper or some shit like that. Maybe he's doing one of these. Maybe he's giving it like the ketchup technique. I don't fucking know. Sure. But for the most part, most dudes are just beating their meat. Like that's just what it is. So if you needed to look up a tutorial, like I get it. Like you didn't, I don't even know. Like I don't, I don't even know how to describe. Like I can't even, I can't even come up with a reason to look up another man beating his meat and then be like, yeah, I need this. And I don't know. I, you know, thinking about it now, I think he might have told me that he did. He watched a few videos just to make sure he was doing it correct. I think that dude was just gay. I don't know if there was like, I don't think there's any other reason to watch a tutorial on another man beating his meat off and then try to be like, I'm trying to emulate this shit. First of all, there's nothing about that shit that's, that's heterosexual. You're literally telling me your, st your meat beat style is in the style of another man meat beating himself. That shit is really gay. I don't know. You know, we were all ignorant at one point, right? But I just, I don't know. Sometimes I think back to that moment. I'm like, damn, that shit was gay, bro. I can't even believe that. Like, I think even if I, if it was a, I think even if it was a gay dude, I would still say that shit's gay because that is gay. But I'm pretty sure he wasn't gay, but I'm pretty sure he was gay. I don't know, man, whatever. The first one is getting dressed every day, regardless of if I'm going to leave the house or not. Yeah, that's not going to happen, dude. I try to do that as much as I possibly can because I do feel a little bit more lively when I'm wearing jeans for some reason. It might just be because it feels kind of uncomfortable, and I feel like that's the appeal of wearing clothes like that. But sometimes you just want to wear sweatpants. Like, I'm not doing anything today, so what the fuck am I going to wear jeans for? Fuck, suck me off. I'm not doing that. That first helps me get confidence in wearing the clothes that I have. It encourages me to style them in a new way. And it helps me practice wearing clothes that might make me feel a little bit uncomfortable out in public to start. The second thing. Sure. I mean, that might be good advice for anybody, to be honest. Is filling my feed with people who look like me. I disagree with this one, dude. All I'm hearing here is like. Even though you know you what I'm hearing here is like you're indoctrinating yourself and there's nothing wrong with like for instance I know right now if you looked at my feed it would just be like Roman it would be like ancient Roman it would be ancient Greece it would be like Bronze Age Greece it would be you know it'd be a whole bunch of that shit right because like right now I'm like really really trying to absorb as much knowledge as I possibly can about like the ancient stuff whatever right there's nothing wrong with that because like you're just enveloping yourself and research or whatever the fuck right there's nothing wrong with that and 
but if you're if you're out here telling me that you you are based what you're doing is like you're surrounding yourself with people that only are going to agree with everything that you say that's not a good thing okay there's a difference between like research and having people that are just going to confirm your biases over and over and over and over again and anytime anybody ever says anything that you disagree with you like crumble that is not a good thing that's just a in my opinion and i think in general that's just a symptom of you being a person that cannot take criticism and that's a weak human being a weak mindset you should have a, the ability to absorb information and try to wrestle with that information and if it doesn't work it doesn't work and then you can exhaust it or if it does work and then you intake it right that's the way it should be all I'm hearing from these people is like, I don't like hearing people say things that I don't agree with, and I never want to hear them say that those those things. That's just that's just gross. You're never gonna learn. You're never gonna actually grow. It's just gonna be a perpetual cycle of you just hearing the same information endlessly, and that's not good. Do not do that. No, do not do that. Surround yourself with people that are going to, some people that are gonna agree with you, some people that are gonna disagree with you, so that way you have a good idea of where you stand. Like you should always be trying to. Throw your throw your uh, your your beliefs at somebody else, and then having that person reflect those things and bring them back to you, and see if they work. If they don't work and they didn't stick, then abandon them. So finding other creators on all of my social media platforms that look like me to give me inspiration. Yeah, just because they look like you too. Like these people are lying. They don't want people that just look like them. They want people that look like them and agree with them. Because there are many fat people. And this is what I always say. Like these people, you got to read between the lines with a lot of these people. It's not about what they say. It's about what they don't say. And oftentimes when they say like, oh, I just want, I just want to be surrounded by fat people. That is not the truth because not all fat people think that same way. You know this for a fact, just because they're fat doesn't mean they're going to automatically believe that they're oppressed because they're fat. No, just because they're fat doesn't mean that they're, they're going to believe that they should be, they should be getting that free plane ticket. Like, no, that's not the case. It, it really just comes down to do, are they fat? Yes. Are they fat? And they believe what I say? Yes. If they don't, then I don't want to talk to them. So no, they don't actually even believe what they're saying here. And like I said, you have to read between the lines or hear what they're not saying. To show me what clothes actually look like on me and to motivate me. Which doesn't work as well, by the way. Just because somebody's wearing clothes and it looks good on them doesn't mean it's going to look good on you. And this goes for anybody. Like if I'm watching a girl do a tutorial on how to look up like how to be like, I don't know, Gwen Stacy from Spider-Man, like the spider girl. And I go, wow, this would look so good on me. But then I try on the spider girl outfit. It doesn't look good on me because I'm not spider girl. Then it makes sense. Right. Obviously. So it just depends on your body and like what you look like roughly. Not everything's going to look good on you, especially if you're plus size, because as you know, just because somebody's fat as fuck and you're fat as fuck and they wear clothes and they slay queen edges. But you try to put on that shit and you're busk butter. Guess what? You're not going to fit the same clothes that they're going to fit. They're, your body is drastically different compared to their body. So, yeah, no, this is not going to work regardless. So don't believe any of the shit this shit this woman's saying. To Crazy. get dressed every day. The third thing is getting outside of your comfort zone and finding. Crazy. Crazy. Get outside your comfort zone. Get outside your comfort zone without getting outside your comfort zone. In community. So for me, everything changed for me with my confidence when I started doing things that I didn't think I could do. And surrounding myself with people to encourage me. And so I joined a hiking group with zero experience hiking. And I ended up leading hikes with this hiking group. This hiking group was full of women who are plus size. But we also had other people who are different shapes and sizes. And this group just gave me the confidence to try new things, get outside of my comfort zone, and gave me a sense of community of people. It's great. I mean, that's awesome. Like, if you discover new things that you really like to do through the realm of, I guess, like, this, like, finding groups of people that want to do stuff with you, that's fine. But you should also be, like, what she basically said was, surround yourself with people that all are going to tell you what you want to hear. And then also surround yourself with people that also have problems walking and walk with them, which is a good thing because it's exercise. So I'll give her that. But you should probably also be trying to find people that also disagree with you. So you can see if your beliefs are actually aligned. You know what I'm saying? Like, see if your beliefs are believable. People who look like me, care about me, and have some of the same struggles. So watching a lot of plus size women go through a body change. These lashes, man. Way too, way too many lashes. Way too many. So watching a lot of plus size women go through a body change is really bothering me not because they're losing weight but because i feel like it's been done in a very irresponsible way i'm somebody who i've i've always shared my journey of trying to lose weight because although i carry my weight well it's hard to be fat Point if you don't know what they what she means by carry her weight well she probably means like 
when she did gain weight, the weight probably distributed to the areas of her body that are really favorable. So like boobs and butt and maybe thighs, probably. Like those are the places that most women would find very favorable. There's really not any place that are favorable for men to gain weight because we don't have the appendages that women really look like that men look at that are attractive for women. Men don't have those same traits. Like I don't even know. Like, I guess maybe, like, having the dick print, but, like, you're not going to get dick print when you're fucking 250, bro. It's just not – it's not going to work. Um, having a big gut as a man is not as attractive as having thick thighs as a woman. I don't know what to tell you, dude. Like, women got a little bit more leeway, right? Because, in general, women ha carry a little bit more fat in general because – they have butts and boobs, but men don't really have those features. So if you're fat as fuck as a man, you have really no excuse. You have to lose the weight. Otherwise, you just look like a pile of, you know, like dried up milk in the sun. Point blank period. It's hard to find clothes. If you want to travel and do certain things, it's just, it, it's difficult. Especially motherfuckers don't like fat people. Let's keep it a buck. But True. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. That is 100% a factual statement. That people don't like fat people. It's really hard for you guys to find clothes. And you know what's really interesting though? is like you can diagnose all these problems, but you just don't know that the solution is just to lose weight. And then you won't have these problems anymore. But go off, queen. What I do not think is fair. And By the way, I don't think that's like racist to say. I had somebody in like a comment section go like, oh my God, it's so racist. Like, why are you saying, why are you saying go off queen to a black woman? And I'm just thinking like, okay, well, like obviously you have never seen any of my videos ever ever because like it's not just towards like i'm sorry you saw one video where i saw where i talked well, i'm sorry you saw one video where i said go off queen that i was talking to a, about a black woman but there are plenty of women that i've said go off queen to and it's not in signifier because they're black i don't even understand why that would even be racist because i said go off queen is it because you think a black woman are just queens in general i don't think anybody's a queen but you know it's just funny to say anyway i'm a queen obviously though what i think is irresponsible is when people plus size people who have a large following and a large body they, they built their career off of women who uh, are i hate this i really hate this uh, this ideology of you built you built your platform you built your career you built everything off of fat black women or just fat women and now when you're trying to lose weight you're basically turning your back on those same that same demographic of people because you want to be healthy and i'm always thinking so what do I do then? Do I just like not lose weight because I'm being held hostage by the people that are also being held hostage by their bodies? Like if, if you come up, if you have new knowledge, right? If now you realize you were wrong about all the things that you were, that, that you thought you were right about and you feel like you can't vocalize this now because if you do, you're going to annex a good portion of your audience. You should do that because Yes, you will lose people that watch you. You probably will like alienate a lot of people. But isn't it better to have the truth be known than it is to just grift? Because like, it's just sad. Because like, what 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 is the solution? Just don't do anything, and then just say fuck it. Just stay fat, even though you know it's wrong, and then lie to your audience, or at least tell them the truth and get healthy for yourself. Like, what what is the solution here, dude? I hate this. Are looking to them for inspiration to gain confidence in themselves sometimes young women i don't care though like why does it matter if it's young women why are you virtue signaling as if like what the fuck this doesn't make any sense at all like bro i don't give a fuck if it's young women or if it's old women or fucking gay men or fucking indonesian butt wrestlers i don't care who it is why does it matter if the truth is the truth it shouldn't matter who you're saying it to like what the fuck why are you even Bring it, just bringing up, like, young women as if, like, so the fuck what? If anything, that would be more valuable to them because when you're younger, you're more impressionable, so you're hearing the truth. What the fuck? And to gain confidence in themselves, sometimes young women who haven't necessarily even gained the confidence, but they look at these, they look at these women and say, oh, my God, if she can do it, then I can do it, too. Don't get me wrong. I know that – I know some people might not agree with this, but – to a certain degree, you are responsible for the people that watch you. And I'll give you a good example, right? Like when Alex Jones says something, right? His audience believes it, or at least a good portion of his audience believes it. And a lot of those people won't back backtrack it or research it or whatever. They'll just believe flat out what he says. And that could be very dangerous because if he says something that's very, very not true or something that's very, very, um, you know, terrible, then those people are going to believe those things and they're going to keep those ideologies. So to a certain degree, 100%, you're going to have to be as truthful as you possibly can be. Right. And try to be as good of a person as you possibly can, because it's not just you. That's I'm, I'm not one of these people that sits there and sits there and goes like, 
oh no, I'm just a guy on the internet just making videos. And like to a certain degree, obviously everybody is like that. But to another degree, nah, dude, you're responsible for the people that that watch you and things like that. Like you're gonna have to like if you don't want people to believe something, then you know, speak your fucking say what you know is true. So if you build an audience based off of like a lie, but you didn't know it was a lie, it was not a lie because a lie requires a lie requires intent. You, it was you were ignorant, but now you know the truth. And if you continue to if you continue to go along that line and not say the truth, that is a lie. That is 100% a lie. So instead, you should be telling people the truth because otherwise, you're, that's just a bad person. You're just literally bringing people, your audience, the people that watch you, the people that that, that really care about you. You're lying to them, and that's terrible. Like that is obviously 100% terrible. So like, there, what is the alternative here? It's either you lie to your audience. And you you keep you retain the viewers, but you're lying to yourself and you're lying to your audience, or you tell them the truth and you annex a portion of your audience, and the but at least you tell them the truth, probably the truth, right? Look at these, they look at these women and say, "Oh my God, if she can do it, then I can do it too," and I think it's very irresponsible to build a career off of that and then go through this drastic change where you're losing hundreds of pounds and not even address it because. It will be triggering to these people. And I just feel like, yes, you don't have to, you don't owe nobody an explanation of why you wanted to do it. Because at the end of the day, you have to do what's best for you. But also, you can't build a whole life off of encouraging women to love themselves. And then you do this whole shift and not say nothing. Not say anything, but I get what she's saying. It'd have been different if you was, you know, cooking food. And your body was not the forefront. But if you have literally built a career off of loving your plus size body and then you go and you change it, which is absolutely okay. But then if you be like, I ain't got to say nothing, I ain't got to do that. That's no, you you actually you do. Yeah, she probably is partially right here. Like you probably should address it. Um, I think actually you probably should address it right off the bat. Like if you know now that when like, for instance, Lizzo. She didn't talk about it. She actually, like, I remember, like, when Lizzo first came out, she was like, I'm a plus-size influencer. Like, people got to follow me because I'm fat. Like, it's totally fine to love your body, this and this and this and this. She didn't say shit when she lost weight. Like, she was just losing weight, right? And people, like, completely demonized her for that. And because she was shitting on people for a really long time. She was saying, like, oh, she was – she literally at the very beginning of her career, she was shitting on people because they were saying that fatness is bad. But now here she is, didn't say shit about it. And she lost a ton of weight, which is really good for her, by the way. But she should talk about it. She should have said like, hey, I'm losing weight for whatever reason. But you should also specify like, it's not good to be fat. Like I was wrong. I was totally wrong. And it's okay. I don't know why so many people have a problem admitting that they're wrong. It's okay to be wrong. If anything, it's a powerful ability to look back at when you were ignorant or look back when you were wrong and acknowledge that it is really okay. And it's really okay too, to say that. I don't know. It's okay to say, you don't know things. I'm sick of people. Like when you have conversations with them and they just say shit to try to make it seem like they, they know what they're talking about. It's okay. Every once in a while, if you're in a conversation and you genuinely don't know, just say, I don't know. Like, yeah, I don't know. You're not going to know everything. It's okay. And it's okay to say you were wrong. It's really okay to say you were wrong. Matter of fact, don't let, don't let, pride hold you back from making big decisions in your life because you know if you do it's like no it's fuck it dude just like accept it swallow it it's okay you're a bigger person for saying you were wrong anyway and i think it will show some compassion for women who are looking at you not that you're responsible for how people feel but damn i just it's disgusting to me call call them out call them out throw out the name throw out the name bro like you know you're gonna talk all that shit say the name some of these women have literally made hundreds of thousands of dollars because of these other plus size women have looked to them in some sort of way and they can't even say hey this is what you know I'm I'm doing and it doesn't mean this or just a snippet of a conversation I just feel like it's very irresponsible I agree but I also think that like if you want to lose weight for the health reasons and you've come to the new realization that the weight that you were at was not helping you at all like, that's a great thing, honestly. It probably, especially if you do have a large following. I agree with this woman, though. She should probably, you should probably address it, 100% address it. More information is always better. Um, And it just made me look at some of y'all different. Because, like, it's lame. I don't even know another way to say it. I've been wanting to say this for a long time. And I've been trying to gather the right words. But at the end of the day, like, it's irresponsible. It's lame. It is what it is. You know, 
I think that even though at the very beginning I thought this woman was saying something that was completely different, I mean, she is kind of saying that, but she's also like, this is why I always give people the benefit of the doubt. And I always like to listen to the entire thing and like give people as much leeway as possible. Cause I really hate it when people take people out of context. Cause like anybody can say anything ridiculously crazy without context. Like I'll give you an example. I love BBC in other men's mouths not in my mouth never in my mouth i would never suck a cock never in my entire life would i ever swallow a man with my mouth i'm taking removing teeth unlocking my jaw to fit just gargle body wash tons and tons of penis in my mouth because i love penis i would never say that you see like if you just clipped any of those things and just posted them somewhere it would seem like i'm gay right and the amount of times, right, I remember the other night, like, we were doing a live stream, right, and there was this guy that was canceling Jordan Underwood, right, and Jordan Underwood, obviously, is not the smartest person, but in this video, he he cut it off right before Jordan Underwood said the main point, because, like, anybody looks crazy if you cut them off at the right point, and then he just cut her off and then responded to her and ended the video, and I remember, I was, like, watching this, I was like, wait a minute, hold on, bro. Like, I'm not a fan of Jordan Underwood, but that was really fucked up because like, everybody was like, going to Jordan Underwood. I think she, like, deleted her whole entire TikTok because of this, but I don't know. The point I'm making is, like, sometimes people will, um, you know, take people out of context and then say something. And then, like, people don't backtrack it. People don't, like, check on it to see. And I feel like, for me, I can't ever do that. Like, I will always give people the benefit of the doubt. I will always look at the extra research. Like, if you got something to disprove it, I will tell you I'm wrong. Or whatever. Like, I always like to look at the clips in full. Like, I'm never going to cut up clips because I want I want to see exactly what they're saying. It's too easy to just, say, just take one clip, like, of a, of a three-minute video and take, like, a 30-second segment of that and then just react to it or say something negative about it. No, nah, bro. You're going to get the whole thing because otherwise, um, <laughs> you're always going to be right. But when somebody, like... I don't know, man. It doesn't matter. The point I'm making is like, even though I didn't like Jordan Underwood, I thought it was really fucked up that somebody said something out of something to her out of context. Like even when I was watching the video, the video alone was really fucked up that the guy was reacting to. But um, it was the one where she was saying like fat people should have access to wheelchairs. But he cut her off right before that because she was going to go into the, the nuance of why she thought that. But he just cut it off right before. And then she got like really a lot of hate for it, which is really fucked up. Um, but anyway, it doesn't matter. You know, I just think but that's one thing you're going to get here. Like, I'm not going to, I'm going to let the, the clips play because I'm not like here to, uh, cut the clips up or whatever, dude, you can get the full ones. Anyway, guys, we're going to end the video here. If you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate it for everybody to leave a like comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all those things that appreciate. I want to thank everybody. That's a member of the channel. Everybody that's a subscriber. Thank you. Everybody. That's um, supporting me. I really appreciate it. I really, 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 I really, really appreciate it. Um, I think this video, this is Monday. Uh, I'm getting new internet because the internet that I have is fine, but it's not terrible for live streaming. So I literally bought new internet and it's terrible that I had to spend money on the internet. But I mean, I'm obviously I had to spend money on the internet before, but like, you know, what's really interesting is like the internet I have now is worse than the internet that I just bought and it's better which is really interesting. Isn't that crazy? And they gave me a $200 Target gift card because I bought the internet, uh, which is great, I guess. That's like, I don't know, like a month and a half of internet usage, I guess, dude. I don't even know. I'm go what, what should I buy with a $200 gift card at Target? I don't even go to Target. Uh, I feel like Target is like the gay Walmart, but whatever, it doesn't matter. You you know what does matter? You matter. You matter a lot. And if you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now, leave it down below by typing in flashlight because look at the one I have. Wow. Wow. Ooh. Right? Now, type it down below. Flashlight. Isn't this a cool flashlight, dude? Isn't it? This is a cool little flashlight. It's like the ones that the police use, you know? Like, what you doing over there? What you doing over there? Put the, put your hands up. Put your hands up. Whatever. It doesn't matter. You're a beautiful person. You don't need a flashlight to light up your life because your face, your beauty, your amazingness is already emanating off of you to such a degree that it, like, puts out light. And honestly speaking, um, we're going to need to use that. Uh, listen, we're using gasoline. We're using coals. We're using non-reusable, uh, non-renewable energy. And I think it's really fucked up that we're doing all this fossil fuels and all this other stuff. And you're here literally emanating just amazingness off your body. We could probably take... You empower like 15 cities off of you. And I'm talking about big, giant metropolitan areas. Like I would say like six or seven different New York cities altogether could be powered just from the follicles of your hair. 
So I think that you need to go and talk to somebody, probably go up to Big Daddy Biden and say, hey, listen, use me. I need, give me, you know, like uh, pay off my co- pay off my college loan debt and I'll let you like farm me for like three minutes and then you can power like the entire civilization. Like we just wrap a Dyson sphere around your head or something like that to get the electricity off of you or something like that because you're just so beautiful. We need to farm it off of you. But anyway, guys. We're going to end the video here. If you want to check out my social medias, it'll be linked down below in the description and the description of the channel. You have to do is click the about and you'll see the rest of it. Um, My Instagram, Discord, Twitter, all those things will be listed down there. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. 